What's up guys and welcome to the first episode of what may be a new series for me. I have noticed that uh, people seem to be pretty interested in conversations regarding OBD2 codes and what they mean and how those systems work and diagnosing them in general. So this, if it works out, may be the first ever episode of a new series that I would like to call Codes Explained. So today I'm going to talk about two codes that in some cars is only one code. And the reason why I chose this one first is because it's a really common problem that you see in cars across the board. That's going to be the catalyst efficiency codes. There are two of them. Uh, one is P0430. The other is P0420. Now in a car like the Grand Prix, which only has one monitored converter, you're never ever going to see P0430. The P0430 code is only present in cars that have more than one converter. If it has one per side, then you'll have P0420, which is catalyst efficiency bank one, and P0430, which is catalyst efficiency bank two, uh, depending on which side of the engine each converter is on. But they essentially mean the same thing. And like I said, the most common of the two is P0420 because in four cylinders or six or eight cylinder cars that only have one converter, that's gonna be the code that it throws. So first of all, we'll do a little backtracking. I'm sure a lot of you know this, but just so anyone that doesn't understand knows what a catalytic converter is, and yes, it is catalytic converter, not Cadillac converter. I've heard that one a number of times now, but what a catalytic converter does, it is a component that is in your exhaust, generally up near the front of the car, and it acts as a catalyst by burning up. It, basically, it has a honeycomb inside of it that heats up, and as it gets hot, it burns up hard particle pollution in the exhaust system. Things like leftover soot, unburnt fuel, those sorts of things, and basically just gets them burnt up and keeps them from making it all the way out the tailpipe. So it is strictly an emissions component. And prior to say the mid seventies, cars didn't really have catalytic converters. But since then, not only have cars all have catalytic converters across the board now, but some of them have multiple converters. Sometimes you'll have for example, like the Taurus has, uh, the later model Tauruses, you may have three converters. And on that particular car, the two front converters, bank one and two, are monitored. But then they have a third or redundant converter that both pipes dump into. That one is not monitored. So you cannot get a code for a problem with that one. But to get back to what to do if you see this code. The computer will generally set this code if it sees not enough of a difference or not the correct type of behavior from the downstream oxygen sensors. The reason why newer cars have oxygen sensors before and after the converter is purely so that the computer can monitor whether or not the converter is actually accomplishing its goal and burning up any excess stuff. So your upstream oxygen sensors are there for engine tuning purposes, for a second guess on whether or not the engine is achieving the air-fuel ratios that the computer is asking it to. But the downstream oxygen sensors are only there for reference so that the computer can determine whether or not the converter is working. They are not actually used in fuel calculation at all. They are purely there for that purpose. Now, because of that, that code can sometimes be set by oxygen sensor problems. Obviously, if you have upstream or downstream sensors that are not reading correctly in such a way that the computer may accidentally see that as the converter not working, then you could get a false PO420 or 430. Now, the easiest way to tell whether or not it is that is one, when you pull the codes, look for other codes. If you see codes like misfire codes or oxygen sensor codes or air fuel ratio 
codes or a mass airflow sensor code, any kind of a code that is another component that can affect your air fuel ratio in the engine, repair that first before tackling the converter. Because it's possible if enough unburnt fuel gets dumped into the exhaust because of the engine misfiring or running too rich, that the converter won't be able to burn all of that up. And when the computer sees this extra activity on the backside of the converter, it's gonna read that as a bad converter, even though it's not. So look for other codes first. In the event that you only have the PO420 code, the next step you would typically look at is you would look at the upstream and downstream oxygen sensor readings, which you can do with most decent scan tools. And you're basically gonna look at the same thing the computer does. What you want to see is an upstream sensor that's cycling pretty regularly and a downstream sensor that is very stable because what's coming out the other side of that converter shouldn't be cycling. It should be burning it all up to the same. So if you pull the data and the up and downstream converter or up and downstream oxygen sensors are moving almost the same or together, that's a pretty surefire indicator that that oxygen or that that catalytic converter is not working. You can also look for physical damage to the converter. If you hear it rattling when you tap on the pipe or something like that, that can indicate that that ceramic brick inside is broken. And obviously if that's the case, then it's going to throw this code also. Um, but the other thing is just make sure that it's running correctly. Cause if it's running rich, if it's misfiring, anything like that, don't replace the converter first, whether you have codes or not, correct the engine running problem first. Then if you still have the converter code, then you would go with that. Now, another thing, once you have gotten into this, you, that you need to be aware of, the catalyst monitor tends to set very slowly. So even if you reset the catalytic converter code, you may not see that light come back on for a couple days, even if the problem is not solved. So if you put a converter on it, don't reset it and then go five minutes and go, oh, I don't see the light, so it's probably fixed because odds are it's not. What you need to do is drive it at least a couple days because it will take a while for the computer to run that test. And in a lot of cases, it may not even run it until the next morning when it cools all the way down. So other than that, the only advice I would really have on converters is when you go to replace them, you have different options. Most of the time, you're gonna have converters that are made as specific replacements for that car, or you're gonna have universal converters that you can have welded into the existing pipes. The only problem with using universal converters is that most of the time they're sort of loosely grouped by weight. And even if that converter is listed as a replacement for the one on your car, there's really no guarantee that it's 100% up to the spec of the original one. And if you put a perfectly functional converter that is not up to that spec, you may have that code return anyway. So even though it is sometimes a little more money, I would generally recommend if you're keeping the car stock to just replace it with something that's made specifically to duplicate the OEM piece. Plus it should also be a bolt on matter at that point and will not require cutting or welding, which means you can do it at home in the driveway, which will also save you money over having to take it to an exhaust shop. So, that's the basic rundown on PO420 and 430. Uh, if there's anything that you're still confused about or anything you think I should have mentioned I didn't or any additional questions, please let me know down in the comments. I will read all the comments and respond to as many as I can. And other than that, I'm gonna get out of here for this one, but thank you for sitting through this long video and let me know if you like this. And if you do like this sort of a format, um, there are plenty more diagnostic codes I can go over. Uh, so just drop me a comment, let me know. Hit like on this video if you liked it. That helps my channel grow. And make sure you're subscribed to my channel and you've hit the notification icon. Other than that, I'm out of here. I will see you guys next time. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. And peace.